So this video discusses and demonstrates the difference between lower rib bucket handle breathing and upper sternal rib pump handle breathing. And then we're gonna look at an exercise to try to dissociate one from the other. So when we're talking about bucket handle breathing, we're thinking about where the lower ribs, the, the ribs that don't have a direct attachment to the sternum or chest, how they move. The movement is gonna be more of like a bucket handle. So if we visualize this side being the right side of my ribs, when the ribs are down, that would be kind of at the end of an exhale. The bucket handle will be pointing down. When I'm inhaling, the rib just starts to move up like that as the diaphragm widens because the center of the diaphragm drops. I'm inhaling, it comes up that way. Exhaling, it comes back down that way. So that's gonna be an important image because we're gonna to try to keep the ribs down. We're gonna to try to keep the bucket handles down and as we hold the pressure that would hold an exhale and then try to move only from the area of the sternum, which would be more of the pump handle. So if you think of the pump handle up in the sternal ribs here, it's gonna be more of like this hinge here. So if we were thinking we were pumping something, the inhale now when we're widening would just bring the pump upward a little bit. And then when we're exhaling, it would drop back down. And the same thing would happen on the reverse. So it's not just in the front, so we don't wanna do that. If it just happens in the front, that is sort of an illusion. We're just extending back, but it has to happen in the front. And then the same thing has to happen on the backside at the same time. So there's more of a 360 degree excursion of the trunk. So what we wanna look at as an exercise is we wanna have some type of feedback for understanding that the bucket handles or the lower ribs are held down. So I'm gonna put this band on, which is often used for lateral walks, and we're gonna put it right around the area of the lower ribs, right where our diaphragm would be housed, or as close as we can get to it. Uh, so this will also hopefully make it easier to visualize via a video. Okay, so when I initially inhale, I want the band to expand wide at the side, in the front, and in the back a little bit, so I have some feedback for that. And then when I exhale, I want the band to kind of get skinny with me. So I wanna compress everything 360 degrees. So for this exercise, as I'm doing that, I'm also gonna to try to think about creating a bit of an abdominal brace and a pelvic floor contraction or pelvic floor ascension. So I'm up with the pelvic floor, I have some tension here, the ribs stay down. Now I wanna to try to maintain this and then just take an inhale through the pump handle area. So sternum goes up and forward a little bit and then between my shoulder blades is going to also move up and kind of widen away. So just think of those two pump handles going away from each other. The whole time I wanna to try to maintain this rib down position, inhale, hold the inhale for a little bit, try to see if I'm truly dissociating, do I still have some tension in my abdominal brace? Can I get some expansion up higher? The next exhale, I want the ribs down even more. I wanna get a little bit more pelvic floor. I want anything I lost on the inhale, I wanna make sure I get that back. And then I'm gonna inhale again without losing what I have down here. Expand the pump handle area, hold for a few seconds. Exhale, ribs come down even more. Pelvic floor engages a bit more. So this is helping to make sure that we can kind of separate this out, especially if people are having difficulty expanding from the chest and expanding in a front back direction as opposed to pulling up into the shoulders.